What is up with curse words? Where did they come from? Why are they here? How long have we been using them? I have all sorts of questions that need answers. So let's start with the word shit. S-H-I-T. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Yes. My cow had a nasty case of diarrhea all week. My barn is full of shit. Well, friends, I know, a lot of people think they know where this word shit comes from, but like a lot of other curse words, it's clouded by a mysterious little urban legend, if you will. Back to the 1800s, people would collect cow pies, you know, cow poop, and they used them as fuel for their ships. Now, this would be super handy to the people because cow pies weighed less than, I guess, other liquid fuel, saving them space on their ship or their boat. But then they ran into a bit of a problem. You see, if the cow pies got wet, like with splashes of water, rain, moisture, just wet, the gas within said cow pie would expand. And if left to expand for a little too long, these pies would turn into shit bombs, okay? Shit explosions, explosions of shit. Not ideal, Mm -mm. no (laughs) ma'am, okay? To avoid any literal shit from hitting the fan, sailors would go to extra lengths to make sure that the cargo containers with cow pies were kept high and dry. Now to make sure of this, they would write ship high in transit across the crates. And it's funny. Well, is it funny? Yeah, it is. Because when this is abbreviated, it's S-H-I-T. Ship high in transit. S-H-I-T. Right? Fun story, huh? I guess it's not true. But a lot of people believe it. it it's true. So like maybe there is some truth in there. I just want to tell you the story because I actually think it's kind of clever. And I could see it to be true. There's just no hardcore evidence that it's true. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter because it doesn't just end there. I mean, the word shit has been traced back even further than the 1800s. I guess the word shit started out in Old English, but it was spelled S-C-I-T-T-E, shite. And it was like a neutral word, meaning cow diarrhea, pretty specific. And the kind of word that you'd honestly just hear on a farm, it had no bad connotation. There was no profanity around it. It was like just a word to describe literal cow diarrhea. An earlier version of the S word shows up in an old English medical textbook from the ninth century. Now in the medical textbook, it said, quote, sometimes a person's food digests badly and turns into an evil liquid shit end quote, which love, yes. It just shows that the runs have been around since the ninth century and like literally same shit, different era. Like we can all relate to having the runs. Too much Taco Bell, late night, you know, Del Taco. Woo! TMI, okay. So then an interesting thing happens back in the middle ages, which is like the 13th through the 15th century, pooping was something people did together. Oh my God, yeah, it's so cool. The idea of it's really cool. Just follow me, okay? Because it was a time to socialize, shoot the shit. That's probably where it comes from. And it was just something everyone did together. There was no single stall bathrooms or little stall dividers. It was one big room where everyone was doing their business. No shame, no phones, just talking things out. You know, just sitting on the on the toilet like, hey, What do you got going on today? Tell me about it, you know? And honestly, you probably really get to know someone when you're locking eyes, just like squeezing one out together. That's some bro shit right there. The downside of these big bathrooms was that like they were a breeding ground for all kinds of diseases. Yeah, wasn't pretty. So then when the Renaissance era comes around, people feel smarter. They're feeling educated. They're like science, we know her. There's more money and people could afford to start building houses with more rooms. And with more rooms, people made more bathrooms, their own bathrooms. And honey, this changed everything. People started getting used to doing their business in private. So going potty and talking about it became very taboo. It was like, wow, that's trashy. Like poor people talk about that, going to the bathroom, you know? It was also just a sign of status. The rich people, 
you know, they love status. Anytime they can brag about something, they're going to do it. And now that they had their own bathrooms, it was like, oh, we don't shit with other people. Uh, you know, they love an excuse to look down on anybody. So this is when we see the word shit become kind of like a low key diss. So by 1508, very specific, this is when you see the first documented example of someone using the S word as an actual diss. You wanna hear it? Yeah, this is what this person said. Quote, thou art a shit, end quote. <laughs> Someone was angry. Now back in the day, it was an insult that was only used towards men, but then shit is also a verb. Well, shit as a verb has also been around forever. The first time it was written down was in 1335 in a poem, so romantic. This poem said, quote, whoever so sniffs it, he is ever so wretched. When in that place, you must shit in there, end quote. I really like that opening, whoever sniffs it. Reminds me of like whoever smelt it, dealt it, remember? Okay, so great, we have these examples, but uh, when did it become like a way to express ourselves when we messed up? You know, sometimes when you are running late, you spill coffee on yourself, or I don't know, you left your sim in the pool for too long without a ladder. And the only thing you could do is say like, well, shit, right? So when did that start happening? And surprisingly, not till way later in the 1800s. Cue American Star Spangled Banner Song. On July 5th, 1865, an army sergeant named Private James Sullivan, he got into some major trouble when he was told to get into uniform by like someone in charge. And he replied, quote, oh shit, I can't, end quote. Which I try to find out like why he couldn't, but I guess it's just a big mystery. It doesn't matter. But this is the first time that we have on record like this man using the word, oh shit, as like a reaction. I mean, this is like a big deal, okay? And back then, this was an even bigger deal because this is a man in uniform saying the S word to his boss. But hey, the next time um, you say, oh shit, just take a moment and thank Private James Sullivan because he's really the pioneer who made it a reaction. God bless America. And finally, the first example of someone not giving a shit comes from everyone's favorite author, James Joyce. Ah, yes, James Joyce. In his 1922 book, Ulysses, he describes someone as, quote, a white arsed bugger. I don't give a shit for him, end quote. Which I love that. I don't know who that guy is, but he does not give a shit for him, okay? Now, people were probably using this in like everyday language before James wrote it down, but I love that not giving a shit is right there for all of us to see in classic literature. And this is a side note, but like this is why classic literature is so important slash beautiful because it's a timestamp as to where society was at the time, how they spoke, what they thought, and what we have in common throughout history. We've been cursing and angry at people for many, many, many years. In the 1930s is when we start to see the word shit as an adjective. In other words, to further describe someone or something. For example, like um, your friend Bob is shit-faced. Maybe he's a shithead. Maybe he got shit tits, you know? And then we did the impossible. We, the people, reclaimed shit. Oh, we celebrated it. And by the 1970s in America, we started calling things that we loved the shit. Oh yeah, brother, I love America. It's the shit. We also have more positive spinoffs like holy shit, dope shit, cool shit, hot shit. But nowadays, shit has kind of uh, evolved and is used to describe crap or stuff or unwanted items, sometimes a negative thing. So it's kind of come like full circle. Like, oh yeah, I'll be over in 10 to drop off all that shit. Uh, we need a, a shit counter. We need a curse counter. Nowadays, the word shit is more of like a chameleon. It really depends on the context. I mean, it can be a negative. It could be a positive. It can mean poop, stuff, a noun, your ex, and an adjective. It's all based on user experience. And isn't that just beautiful? Really? It's up to you, baby. What I'm getting at is um, I'm kind of glad that the communal shitting is over. Or am I? I wouldn't mind shooting the shit with everyone. Throughout history, shit has just been there for us. I mean, there are only a few things promised in life. 
living, breathing, dying, and also shitting. Mm-hmm. We all shit. 